Welcome to your walkthrough on your 2025 Baystar Sport 3016 floor plan. In the cockpit area at the driver's seat, you have your equalizer system for leveling the coach. Before you put your coach in the leveling mode, either manual or auto, you want to make sure that your slide rooms are already out. And in order to do that, you want to be on air ride suspension. So you want to be completely aired up, then run your rooms out, and then you would be able to come here to the equalizer system touchpad to do your leveling. So you'll have to have the ignition key on to accessories. Once that's on, you'll be able to hit the power button. And you'll be able to see that your ignition is on. Before you auto level, you'll want to make sure that underneath the coach, there's nothing that's off level to the point where there would be a large object. And then you would be able to come in here and then just press the auto level button. You'll be able to hear the jacks going down. You can see the LED here is operating. Independent of the auto level are the manual buttons that you can adjust manually here. Just a note while it's leveling is you can actually get online and you can get the app to see what your coach is doing with leveling and you'll be able to connect to your touchpad with the Bluetooth. You can see the coach is moving as the coach is getting more level. If for some reason you were in an area that was too far off level, that the jacks would not be able to level, you'll see this LED light for excessive slope, and then you would have to move to a different area for leveling to take place. All right, you can see now the LED went out for operating. All of your jacks are down, so now you can turn off your ignition. Your leveling is complete. Then you can power it down. And then your procedure to bring the jacks back up is the same. You would power it up with the ignition on. And then you would just simply hit all retract. So you can see here all the jacks are retracted. If we had started our ignition, we would be on air ride suspension right now, and then we could run all the slide outs back to the in position. When you're finished, then all you have to do is hit the power button, and that turns the system off. You have your battery boost. We'll illuminate those switches for you by turning on the ignition and the lights. So if we have a chassis battery, that can't crank the engine over to start, we can boost that chassis battery by holding this down for 30 seconds. That connects the house batteries to the chassis batteries, and we should be able to start our engine. Beside that is our generator. Um, if we do have a low set of batteries, we want to have the generator going or uh, plug our coach in. To start the generator is just push up towards the top. The switch will flash and then it starts. To stop it, just push down and the LED goes out. So that means it's stopped. We have a, a pair of fans in the overhead at the top of the windshield. Uh, that helps for uh, moving the air in the cockpit area also defrosting the windshield that can be turned on low off or high we have a dome light above us here at the driver's seat our mirror adjust is here l is for the left hand driver mirror r is for the right hand mirror 
And to make those adjustments, they just are up and down and left and right. If they have frost buildup on the mirror or uh, moisture that you need to get off to view, uh, then turn this on. This is the heater on the back side of the mirror that will defrost your mirrors. If they don't need defrosting, then just leave that off. Emergency flashers here. If we turn those on, you can see our emergency flashers are on. To turn them off, just press down and release again. This is your phone charger. Your phone charger, uh, you can just lay your phone here and it'll charge. Our traction control system is here. If you press that button, you can see the traction control light goes off. If you press it again, your traction control will come on. That's for uh, slippery uh, road conditions. Um, this is our headlight um, dial. When it's on zero, our headlights are off. If we have it on the first selection, that's for the marker lights. And then the next selection is your headlights. And the next selection is the lights will come on when it starts to get darker outside or you turn the windshield wipers on. If you want to dim the lighting in the switches and the dash, you can press this button and that will dim out the backlighting. Or if you go on the opposite side, it'll make it brighter again. Below that, you have your USB charger here and USB-C charger along with a 12 volt insert plug here to charge. Below that, you have your emergency brake here. So if you press that, that's your emergency brake and the release is here. You have your hood release here. So if I pull this back, that will release my hood. And then we have our fuse panel here. If you loosen these tabs, you can take off your fuse panel on your dash, uh, you have your instrument cluster here with your RPMs, your oil pressure, your engine temperature, your fuel indicator here, and uh, your, your transmission temperature here. In the center of the screen, uh, we can select uh, which um, part of the home screen there that you want to view just by uh, scrolling your upper or down arrows here or left and right. So that's your main menu trip going over. The next one is outside temperature. And then you can scroll up or down here with that. The battery indicator light is showing that the battery is on. That's because our ignition is on. That will go out if we start the engine. Below that is our gear shift indicator, our miles per hour or kilometers per hour. On the wheel, of course, this is uh, the way we navigate through our middle screen or our, what I called our home screen. To set our uh, cruise control, we turn it on here and we have our settings here. We can turn it on and off here. This is our horn. On the right hand side is your shift uh, sh to sh change the gears. You can uh, shift in uh, reverse, neutral, or drive. In addition to that, if you're ho uh, towing a heavy load, you can press this button and it will uh, enable the transmission to shift in the most efficient way when you're hauling a uh, trailer. If you want to shift manually, you can do that here with the plus or minus. Below that is a USB port that can be plugged in to connect to your infotainment center. You can select a uh, home screen and then you can scroll like this manually or you can just press the arrow to scroll through the channels. So I would maybe want to select cameras here. So that's going to show uh, the rear view camera. If I want to select a different view, down here is my camera selector. So I can go right view, left view, rear view. When I'm done uh, and I want to go back to, let's say, the radio screen, if I just touch the screen, 
it gives me the icon to go home so I go back to the home screen so you can see this uh, tells me how far I can go over to the right I've gone all the way over to my selections on the left now I can choose radio Sirius Android CarPlay if I scroll over I've got USB plug, camera, Bluetooth, audio. If you select, um, let's say for instance, Bluetooth, uh, now you'd be able to connect your device to the radio just by pressing the pair button here. So now it would be pairing with uh, Bluetooth. You'll still have to choose this as your selection on your phone. So you'll uh, choose your radio that shows up and then you'll make your connection with your paired device. Going back to the home screen you've got your audio visual in it does have a micro SD uh, you can adjust the uh, sound with your equalizer and then there's additional uh, car information here. So if you are tuned into a radio station but you're not getting any volume even though you've turned up the volume here you can see we have volume it's not playing uh, go to your home screen and make sure zone one is turned on so press home one zone one and then you'll have your volume if this is off then you don't have volume so just remember that when you're turning, tuning your radio in. Uh, these controls down below uh, basically are just the icons that you see, the home screen here. You can uh, flip this up, plug a USB in directly into the radio here. Uh, you can change your band here, your mode button uh, to go, let's say you wanted Sirius. You can go there. SD card, if you flip this up, you've got your SD card here. To turn the system off, just press the center button and release. Just below that, we have a little storage area here. We have our camera switcher, which you saw earlier. The shade is for the front windshield, up and down. Now, if I press it down, it'll go down as long as the ignition is not on, but you'll see it only goes up. Even though I'm going down, that's because my ignition is on. If I turn my ignition off, then my shade will go down. That's a safety feature in case your, if your engine's running, you don't want the shade uh, to go in any direction except up, so you can see out of the windshield. Just to the right of that, you have your HVAC control just for the cockpit area here. So you've got heating and cooling which is air conditioning. To turn that on, just turn it on to uh, number one setting, two, three, or four for your fan speeds. And then if you want uh, hot air or cool, uh, that's the center knob. Uh, you will need to press the snowflake um, icon here to get your LED light, the little blue one to come on, that's for your compressor. Otherwise, you won't have uh, air conditioning. And then you can select the recirculate button to get the cooling going faster here in the uh, cockpit area if you like. If you don't select recirculate, you'll get fresh air, a little bit of fresh air coming in from the outside. If you don't turn your snowflake on and you have fresh air coming in, you can still get some of the cooling effect if it's a cool day by going over to the cool side. And then, of course, you have your selections for defrost over here on the right or other um, floor or mid here in the knob. When you're done using it, just turn it off. In between the driver and passenger seat here at the front, we have more storage in our cabinets in the overhead here. We have our phone charger here, our vents for the dash area. We have our light above the passenger seat here, 120 volt plug and our LP detector. Behind the seat, we have our fire extinguisher. And in the overhead, we have our control panel 
for our battery disconnect. Below that we have our TV over the air receiver. If we turn this on, we'll be able uh, to see how many channels it scanned and received. Since we're in a building, we're not receiving any channels. Um, when this is on, you're going to be able to scan for channels and then you'll have to go to your TV and then go to your menu and scan for channels there uh, to pick up what channels you've stored in here. When you're looking for additional channels, you can press the search again. It will find more channels. If not, um, you can use the channels you have and fine tune with these buttons here uh, to make small adjustments uh, to the channels that you have received. If you want to watch cable, this has to be turned off. When that's off, then the cable is enabled. So this is only on when you want to watch over the air TV. Off is cable. Your Xantrax inverter, which we'll see outside in the first baggage compartment back, is turned on and off here. This is your power control for your uh, precision circuits load shed. If you have anything that's load shedding, it will, uh, it will appear in this window. Instead of saying powered, it would say shed. So this helps uh, control uh, what appliances are running. Um, as long as you are in 50 amp, your appliances will all run. But if you're plugged into less than 30, you would need to select uh, a lower uh, setting, like say 25 or 15, and you can make that selection here. At the bed lift, so to operate that is simple, just up and down, but you have to have it turned on here. So this is the on and off for the bed lift. So right now, if I wanted to operate the bed, it's off. If I want to turn it on, it's to the right. Now, if I stand clear, I can press the down button and the bed will come down. It automatically will stop in that position. It's uh, set just as it comes to the top of the seats. To go back up, it's the opposite. Just press the button to go up. But in this position, you'll notice it has two latches here for the step-up ladder. So if I get the ladder, I can put these in. and now I can step up into the bed. It has a 500 pound limit. When I'm finished and I'm ready to move it back up, I move the ladder out of the way and just press the up arrow here, make sure there's nothing in my way to go up. If the bed does come down too far onto the seat, you can use your seat adjustment to move the seats down on the driver's side. This is your patio light on and off for the light above the door on the outside. This is your step override switch. If we turn that on, the step will stay in the out position even though we close the door. Our awning lights, the LED light strip lights on the awning can be turned on and off. And our slide out can be opened and closed here. You uh, have to have the ignition switch turned off or the key for the ignition has to be off for this to operate. And you need to have your coach parked in a level position and check your reveal to make sure that you have at least three eighths gap. We'll go over that when we go outside. Just to the right of that is your main awning control for the patio awning. <clears throat> if you want to open the patio awning, you have to turn it on. And that includes uh, using the remote. So if you want to use your outside remote and open and close the patio awning, this has to be on. But you can still operate the awning open and closed there. Below that is your water heater. Your water heater electric and gas switch on and off. Down is off. 
the seat has a special uh, insert here. You can put your iPad or your phone or whatever here, and you can adjust that here uh, and rotate it. These can both be moved up and down. There are a couple adjustments for the seat. On my right hand side, there's a lever for the seat back. I can adjust that. And then I can rotate the seat as well as there's a footrest here. The footrest switch is right here. So just pull that back and I can set my footrest out here. The seat can be rotated around towards the living room. So to do that, the lever on my right will rotate the seat all the way around. Into the living room area to rotate around. I would just. This is the handle that you have to pull towards you to continue to rotate because it locks in the center position this way. So you just rotate it around. Now you can be facing the living room. When you're ready to travel, just rotate back and it will automatically lock into place. At the driver's seat, you'll need to adjust uh, forward or back uh, so that you can uh, get close enough to the pedals uh, we have the electric seat on the driver's side, not the manual. And we have the uh, tilt adjust up and down. And we also have the, the seat back, the entire seat moves. So you can, those three are the electric adjustments. You have your armrests up and down. On the left hand side, I can tilt the seat back. Once I get adjusted, release the lever and it locks into place. To rotate the seat around to the living room area, there's a lever here on my left side. So I can just release that lever and I'll be able to rotate the seat around. I can step out of it and just rotate the base all the way around. Put the armrest down so we can clear that and then we can rotate all the way around. When we're finished with the chair towards the living area, ready to uh, put it back for driving, just rotate it back around this way and it will automatically lock into place. So moving over into the living room area, uh, you'll see this touchpad control. We have our lighting control, home screen, and we can go to any one of these icons and control the coach from this position. Similar to the 10 inch panel, we can go to our tanks and we can see fresh gray, black, and LP tanks here. We can turn our water pump on. We can turn our auto fill on and top off. Gray is off. Back to the home screen, we can turn our lights on and off, and then back to the home screen again. Our automatic gen starter, we can from this screen or go into setup and set it up. We'll quiet time if we're at a park and we can't have it running at night. And of course our HVAC screen, it's the same as in the 10 inch. We select the room that we want to turn on or off for heating or cooling. And then we go to mode. Once we go to mode, we can choose cooling heating, or just auto, and it'll select for us. Then we can adjust the temperature to what we want. You might see, you might see the little uh, hourglass icon, and that's just the time it's taking for that air conditioner or furnace to come on um, before it runs. You have to have the on-off selected. You'll notice the when I turn that on, the hourglass comes on, meaning it's, it's getting ready to start. There it turned on, the heat pump is on. But if I want to turn it off, we just press that one. The control below 
here is for our ceiling lights all on and all off. So when you first enter the coach, you can turn your lights on inside the coach. All of them will come on. Uh, there's a 120 volt outlet here uh, that you can plug things into. The window here has manual shades, day and night shades, and crank to open windows with screens. Above us, we have more cabinet space here. And a fold out sofa into a bed. So to do that, we just remove the back cushions. And we'll use these in just a minute when we open this up. You'll need to pull this up to release it. So I release that. Now I can lift it out. And I'll need to put the back down. And there we have our bed. To close it, we just do the reverse. Back goes up. And we lift and fold. So at the dinette, we have overhead space for storage. We have our audio visual cabinet. Uh, this cord plugs into our TV. We have a satellite connection there, so we can put our satellite receiver here or DVD player uh, and plug it in on the two outlets that are back there to operate uh, movies and TV here. That TV, of course, will need to be programmed in the menu section and you need to scan for cable channels or you'll need to scan for over-the-air channels. So with our television turned on, um, we'll, we'll use our remote control to go to the home screen, press the home button in the center that gets to this screen. And then this icon here is our selection for menu. So just uh, toggle over to the left here and go to settings. So you'd have to scroll down to settings, then press the center button here. And now scroll over to all settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan for channels. If we scroll down here to broadcasting, then we select that. Press the center button again, and we go through auto program to find the channels. So press auto program, and we want to press the start to auto program. We have to have our over the air um, wine guard uh, turned on, and once that's on, then we're going to scan for air channels. Yes, and It'll go through the scan and it'll show us how many channels it found. Thirty nine channels. So we can either scan again or we can go to our different settings or just close. You'll have to scan the same way uh, with the wine guard antenna off if you want to watch the cable channel. So if you want to scan for cable, turn the over the air antenna off and then scan again for your cable channels if you have part cable available and want to watch cable. Now we should be able to connect with a channel here. Yes. To go back to the home screen and scan for cable, scroll left. 
back to settings to the right all settings broadcasting auto program and this time we want to we're plugged in the cable we've turned our over the air uh, wine guard off and now we can scan for the cable channels obviously since we are not plugged in the cable we won't pick up any, but that's how you would scan for the cable. And you'll have to scan for channels for each TV location, whether it's out here or in the bedroom. The table here goes down, and this is also uh, made into a bed. You'll need to lift up the seat cushions first and move them out of the way. And then after the table goes down, we'll be able to put these back along with a center cushion to go over the table. There's a release handle down here. Once that's released, we can push the table down and we put our seat cushions back. In our center cushion that's stowed in the in the back bedroom under the bed and now we have another sleeper just remove it and do the opposite just put the table back up Lift the table up and lock the handle. So now our table is locked. We can put our seat cushions back. Um, underneath each seat cushion, we have a drawer that you can pull out for extra storage, and that's under both sides. So as you move into the kitchen, um, of course, we have our sink and cabinets. Uh, in the overhead, you'll find uh, decals that Newmar puts in here that are informational about their country club, uh, about your coach, the serial number, the gross vehicle weight information, uh, the paint code numbers uh, for your exterior paint. You'll find your uh, motorhome, motorhome uh, chassis owner's manual uh, from Ford. Um, in addition to that is a large case of material that Numar uh, gives you regarding all of the appliances in your coach, along with the plumbing information, heating, air conditioning, exterior, electrical, and all of your appliance information with your registration cards for your warranty. So go through those owner's manuals and turn in your warranty registration cards or go online and register your products uh, online. On the back wall here, you'll see a plug. That is the plug uh, for your microwave. So when you plug that in, your microwave will power up. Of course, we have our sink and our sink covers. The sink just rotates like this and it has a wand uh, that extends down uh, on and off, hot and cold. Cabinets below. A 120 volt outlet for additional appliances you might have here on the counter 
uh, like a coffee maker. Uh, the first drawer, you'll have all of your remotes, your TVs, um, your awning, uh, your touch-up touch up paint. Uh, this is uh, for your uh, laptop or iPad holder uh, for the passenger seat, along with your flagpole holder. And more drawer space going down. Uh, this is the connections for your hot water heater. And those connections are the cold and hot uh, for your water. They also have a uh, cutoff here for the bypass when you winterize. So this is where the bypass is for your hot water heater. Your Whirlpool microwave here. At the cooktop and oven, you have your uh, controls here for your burner and for your oven, uh, but you'll need to ignite it manually here. Just turn to ignite. So once you go to uh, the light, um, adjust the light, and then you would turn to ignite. So to light your oven, you'll need to open this and have a ignition source to reach back to the pilot. Turn the pilot to on here. And as you hold that in, light your pilot. Once your pilot's lit and you've held this down for about 60 seconds, you can release. The pilot should stay on. And then you can rotate the knob to the setting you want after you close the door. When you're finished with the oven, just turn it back to the off position here. Below that, we have another large drawer for storage. We have our Norcold refrigerator beside our stove. The doors, when they close, they, they lock automatically. This is our freezer and refrigerator. So at the top of the refrigerator are your controls on, off, and then you can make the selection here for your freezer, adjust your temperature here for your refrigerator temp, press here, and then make your adjustments here. And then the backlighting in the handles, you can press this one and change the backlighting here. So across from our kitchen, we have our pantry, a dual door with shelves. Uh, at the base, there's a, a vent for your heating. The next door back is your full bath with shower. Your full bath, as you walk in, has a large cabinet for the medicine cabinet right above the sink. Under the sink is more storage. And the louvers here are for your return air going down to your furnace. Your shower has a lock uh, for the doors. You want to keep that locked with them in the open position for transit. So when you're ready to take a shower, you unlock and then you can close the doors, reopen, and then just remember to lock so they don't fly open when you're traveling. Uh, the shower is pretty self-explanatory. On is pulled towards you, hot and cold. And then if you want to uh, have it come out of the wand or the uh, overhead, you can adjust that at the top. On the cabinets on the right-hand side, we have um, more space here. And here is our lighting center. The lighting panel controls the lighting circuits in the house. More storage here. Uh, the toilet is uh, operated here with the foot pedal to flush, just push down. The overhead fan is a is a ceiling fan with vent uh, to go outside. So to open it up, you'll have to 
manually turn this handle to the right or clockwise and then turn the fan on here. When you're finished, just turn it off and close. If you want to disable the fan, you can turn this switch off so that the switch on the wall is disabled. There is a touch panel here for the circuits uh, in your coach. Um, again, this controls your heating, air conditioning, tanks, lighting, and automatic generator starter. Um, after you make a selection, then you would just go in and view. Uh, one note is, um, if you're looking at your tank setting and you're going to flush the toilet, if the black tank is showing full, um, you would want to empty your black tank before you flush the toilet. Moving into the hallway after the bathroom, you'll have your 10 inch monitor panel and you can see the icons that are available here at the bottom. And as soon as you select one of those icons, it goes to that function or that feature. So if I would select tanks, that's gonna display my tanks. Fresh, gray, black, and LP. It also shows water pump and my lights, my lighting control. I can uh, turn my lights on and off from here. If I go and select my AGS, I can do my setup for when I want my AGS to come on or when I want it to stay quiet and not turn on. If I go to my HVAC screen, I can see that I can turn on my heating and ventilation and my air conditioning in the living room or the bedroom. When I touch any one of these settings, it turns from gray to red. That means it's on. So if I want to have my heating or cooling system on, I have to press that on off button and make it red, and then I can control the mode. So currently it's in the off mode. So if I would press it again, now it's in the air conditioning or cool mode. Auto mode means it selects furnace or air conditioning for you. All you have to do is set temperature. Heat pump is the rooftop air conditioner heat pump and furnace is your LP furnace. And since the furnace, we had that on for a second, you saw the flame come on and the furnace was going to give us heat. When we are in the air conditioning mode, whether cool or heat pump, we can leave the fan in auto or we can set the fan on low. If you set the fan on low, it's gonna to continue to run. You can hear uh, the fan just came on. So. If I want the fan to cycle with the air conditioner, then I just leave it in auto, then the fan comes on with the air conditioner or the heat pump. If I go to my setup screen, I'm in my settings for um, enabling programming, HVAC temperatures. I can set uh, my time, for instance, if I need to change my clock to a different time zone, or the, the, the time was wrong. If you hit the back arrow, you can go back to settings here. I can set it uh, programming uh, or weekly. Going to the Bluetooth pair, if I get this app called Connected Solutions on my phone, then I can connect my phone Bluetooth with pushing that button here. It's now in pairing. So this is flashing blue and I would look at my phone and then it would be pairing with this app. When it pairs with the app and this touchpad control, it's going to be on Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is going to enable you to look at any one of these settings and you'll see this on your phone. So you'll be able to control all of these functions on your phone just like you would if you were on the touch panel here. Now there, there is a range around the coach and inside the coach and it depends on the Wi-Fi strength, uh, the Wi-Fi signal. 
and for pairing it, it, uh, it relies on the Bluetooth. So refer to your owner's manual for more information on that. The lighting control is for all of the areas in the coach, stool room, bedroom, bath, kitchen. So if I press the kitchen, I can turn the lights on or off in the kitchen. Overhead lights and the living room all off, all on here. So again, you can scroll through and you have control over all these functions that you see the icons for here at the bottom of the screen. Below that is the fan switch for the kitchen fan. It operates the same as the one in the bathroom. So as you enter the bedroom, uh, you have a large slider door. It uh, unlocks by pushing down and closing to lock. Once it reaches its full travel, it automatically locks to unlock. Just push down again, open. And you'll want to leave it in this open position for travel. On the wall here in the back, we have our HVAC temperature sensor, which uh, senses cold and heat both here in the bedroom. We have our nightstand with USB and 120 volt outlet with a small storage below. Above the bed, we have our 120 volt outlet um, with a small access port here in case you had a CPAP machine or something else that you wanted to run uh, the cord or the hoses down here. You could do that and store your machine or device up on the top shelf here or on the other side. Just below these cabinets is a touch panel control. It does the same as the other ones in the coach with all the systems uh, and lighting controls there as well. On each end of the slide is a window. The window can be unlocked and then opened so that you can get air through the screen. When you're finished, just close it and lock and the shades are all manual. The nightstand on this side has the same two USB chargers and 120 volt outlet with the storage below. Uh, the bed uh, has storage underneath so the bed can be lifted up and it will stay in the up position. Once you lift it, you can release. The third cushion for the dinette uh, bed is here along with the ladder uh, to go up uh, on the height of bed in the overhead at the cockpit. To close, just push down. So this panel on the back wall of your coach uh, can be removed. Just grab a hold of the base. There's a slot for your fingers to reach under and then pull towards you. This is the access to your 120 volt and 12 volt fuses. They're all labeled. So if you have an appliance that quit working, the appliance will be listed here or here for 12 volt. This is a 120 volt appliance. These are 12 volt items. And so if you have something that fails, check your breakers here. If the breaker is turned to the outside. That means they're tripped or off. You'll need to flip them back on. So they should all be facing the center to be on. Sometimes they trip and they're only halfway. So then you need to go all the way off and then back on to reset them. The same goes for the breakers that are powered up through the sub panel. The sub panel feeds power from the inverter to those 120 volt appliances. If they're on, they're up. If they trip, they're down. So you need to reset 
upwards to, re to reset any of the breakers that trip on this one. Or if you just want to turn something off and you don't want it to run, you can just manually come over here and turn them off. The fuses are all labeled for whichever appliance or control that it is. You can just read here, power awning is F6. So if my power awning was not working, I would come over to F6, pull that fuse, and if it was blown, I would go to my spare fuses on this side, get the same size of fuse, which is right on the back side. This is a 20. I would get a 20 amp, and then I would replace it with a good fuse, and then it should work. When I'm done in the fuse panel and breaker box area, I want to make sure and close the panel, align the handle, the handle side here on the bottom. So that's on the bottom. And then the, cl the clasp or the clips align with the rollers to close. So line those up, close on both sides. The vent here on the floor is for your furnace. So as you enter the bedroom on the wardrobe side, you've got your slide out control in and out. To operate the slide, we have the warning and instructions here, but in short, it's just to open is out, in is to retract. You have to hold the button in to move the slide. If you release, the room will stop. But once you come all the way in, you want to hold it until it stops automatically. Same with going out, press and hold. It'll go all the way out and stop automatically, then release. The television is here. Uh, the cabinet where you would plug in your receiver for your satellite or DVD is just below here along with the 120 volt recept and satellite connection. So you would put your receiver for your satellite or DVD here, plug it in, and that goes directly up here to your TV, which you'll have the remote in the drawer in the kitchen. Just below the TV, you've got your window and shades. This is an emergency exit window. The directions are here on how to use it, but Simply put, just releasing these levers here on both sides and then pushing the window out to exit. To close, just reverse, close and latch. Extra drawer space below. And a large wardrobe here with a for a hanging closet, 120 volt outlet here. This cord is the TV that's plugged in on that side. You'll notice a decal here with a lot of model and serial numbers. Um, at the top, it tells you that they're all of the appliances in this coach are listed here, model and serial number. In case you ever need to replace one, you can use that list as your reference. More drawer space at the end. And you have in the back of the coach your rear window with shade. You'll notice in your coach uh, you have these vents. This is where your Heating and cooling from the roof air comes down for a heat pump. That warm air comes here. If you're in the cooling mode, the cool air comes here, but the air goes first into these louvers that have the filter. So you want to clean these filters. If you're in your coach for an entire week, it'd be good to clean these at the end of the week. Um, they collect all the dust that's in the air going up into your air conditioner. So clean that with warm soapy water, rinse it with clean water, and then let it air dry, then put it back. And you'll need to do that with 
all of the vents starting from the back of the coach all the way to the front. When you put these back, if you might have taken these down at the same time, remember the filter doesn't go on the driver's side, they go on the passenger side. You don't want to block the air that's coming out. You want to filter the air that's going in. In the center of the ceiling is your CO2 detector. Uh, you should test that when you're using the coach, pressing and holding the center button, you'll hear an audible tone. And that is the tone that you'll hear if you get a CO2 warning, along with the flashing LED light. If you don't hear that sound, you need to check the battery. Squeeze the sides, pull down, take the battery out, replace it, put the cap back on, and retest. Make sure that it's working while you're using the coach. The smoke detector in the center of your living room area operates just the same as the CO2 detector. Press in the center to test. If you need to change the battery, open it, squeeze to open, squeeze to open, and then replace the battery. Okay, so we're at the front of your coach. Uh, you've got marker lights down here. Um, your headlights, uh, bright and dim, turn signal, reflector, and camera. This is your left-hand camera. When you turn your left signal on, the left-hand camera will view on this side, or you can scroll through and select that camera to view on that side. On top of your cap, you've got your marker lights, you've got your wipers, and your front hood. To release this and open it up to service anything in the, at the front here, at the left-hand side of this, the steering column below, just pull that handle, and then you'll be able to open this up. There's a prop rod on the left-hand side. Just grab it and pull down. Insert here. And then you can check your fluid levels of your wiper washer, power steering, hydraulic jacks. Dipstick is here. Fill is here. Dipstick is here. As you move over here, this is your air filter for your engine. This is your manifold for your jacks. These are your radiators. If they are needing clean, make sure those uh, all your radiators are clean. This is your engine coolant and your HVAC for heating and cooling in the cockpit area, along with your chassis battery and your house batteries. The level of fluid or acid in these needs to stay above the plates so you can remove these caps and check the fluid level regularly. After you add distilled water, if it needs it to get up at least to the above plate level, lock them back into place. To close the hood, we just lift up and reinsert the prop rod in the clasp and close. So at the passenger side, uh, at the front of your coach, you've got your flagpole bracket. So you could just insert that for your flagpole. You've got your rear turn or your uh, camera for your turn signal on the passenger side. Your mirror can be adjusted, tilt or turn, if you loosen these three screws and then to make your adjustment and then tighten those screws. This is the slider window for the passenger. This is the door lock. Let me show you how that works. If you open the door, this small plastic handle is inserted at the top here. So after you insert that, you push down to lock. So now the door is locked in the open position so the wind won't catch it. So this door, when you close it, has two separate latches here, one that initially catches and then one that closes it completely. If someone's inside the coach and they're taking a nap, you'd want to close it soft. So that's the first latch. That's the soft close, um, just to be quiet. It still seals, but it doesn't slam. When you're ready to travel, you're going to have to close it 
all the way into the second latch so you'll have to close it firmly like this. So now you're in the second latch and the door is even with the trim. If the door is locked, you can use the keys to unlock the purple one to lock and unlock the door, whether it's the upper one for the deadbolt or the lower one for the door uh, lock, it's the purple one. And you insert and turn, you'll see that will extend the deadbolt or retract. Same with the door lock. It'll lock or unlock the door lock. We can lock and unlock from the inside the same way. The deadbolt, lock and unlock. We wanna make sure that this is retracted before we close the door if we do it this way. So that would be the only, the only way to lock the deadbolt from the inside. This is the door lock, this is unlock. So now we can move the handle up here, it's locked. To lock and unlock the screen, uh, the magnet holds it to the door, but when we close the screen, if we want this to be locked, we'll need to push this down. Now the, now the door is locked and we can close this. So we have a screen door. We wanna get, we wanna get it open again, just lift up. And when this touches against here, this magnet holds it in place. So there is uh, an additional sunscreen here if you'd like to leave that open or down for more shade. You'll notice the steps are staying out because I've activated the step switch so when I close the door the steps are staying out. If I want the steps to go in and out with the door closing or opening I would disable the step switch I would disable the step switch and then close. <clears throat> now the steps go in. The patio light is above the door and in the overhead. You can turn that on and off. These doors can be locked and unlocked with the black key, not the long one that says Ford, that's your ignition key, but the black one is the one you would use out here to lock and unlock these doors. Up is unlocked, so we can open this first door and we see our Xantrex inverter which charges our battery and changes the battery power into 120 volt in our kitchen to operate our refrigerator and microwave. Our light, our wrench for our wheels, Our next door back is our house batteries. The house batteries need to be serviced as we showed you earlier. These caps can be loosened. Once we loosen them, we can lift, pull them up and check our fluid level. If we need to do more service to the rear batteries, we can lift our pins up and slide the tray all the way out and service the, the batteries in the back. If you disconnect a, a battery and don't remember the, where the wiring went, if you look straight back, we put a schematic there for you so you don't have to guess. You wanna make sure that you rewire the batteries exactly like you remove them. When you're done servicing the batteries, we close this. Uh, just a note, this compartment is not sealed. That's because this needs to be ventilated because of the batteries. Our next compartment back is more storage with lighting. We have our touch panel control module board here for our touch screens. We have our splitter for our TV here. 
We have our satellite and Blu-ray connections out here. If you want to connect to a TV out here, you could plug the TV in here if you'd like. Our slide room control is here. And we have our heating pads for the tanks plugged in. That's great, but you still need to turn the heating pads on inside on the panel for the heating pads to work in cold weather to keep the tanks uh, from freezing. Uh, they will only activate if there's about two and a half gallons to five gallons of water in or fluid in those tanks. So you have to have it plugged in, turned on, and some liquid in the tanks for the heating pads to actually heat. Here we have your suburban LP furnace. Uh, when this furnace is running, air is going in this vent for the combustion. It's coming out hot air here. So it has a warning, hot. So just remember if your furnace has been running or is running, this is gonna be very hot to the touch. You'll burn yourself, don't touch this chrome piece. Uh, back behind the wheel well, uh, when our jacks are down, you'll be able to see the jack down. Just make sure it retracts before you travel. Our awning is here. I've got the remote control. If we wanted to, we can just extend the awning with our remote control. Uh, RET is retract, EXT is extend. So if I press it one time, if I press it once, it'll open. Once it's all the way open, you'll be able to see the LED light strip on the bottom of the roller tube. You can turn on the LED light strip right here, bright or dim. Uh, my lights are on. To retract it, just press the RET button to retract. Make sure you turn off your LED lights. Our next compartment back is our own end generator. It runs off of gasoline that we put in our main tank. To service it or start it manually from out here, you can just remove the cover. Our hand grips are here. Just grab a hold, pull, and our start and stop switch is right here. We can start the Generator here. Or stop. Um, if the generator is running, we have to make sure to get power inside that these breakers are both on. These are 30 amp breakers. You can see the word on so that to the left is on. If for some reason one or both are tripped, you need to reset them back to on. Otherwise, you won't get power inside. Um, you want to check your oil level here and fill if needed. Just twist the cap off, check your oil level. And when you're finished, you can just take your cover, line it back up, and push. In your next compartment back, you've got your water, uh, your fresh water tank. The strip sensor, which measures the level, is on the side here, and you have a drain. Uh, that drain is a low point drain that you would use to open to empty all the water out, uh, for instance, to winterize. In this compartment, there is an additional light switch in the back. So we're at the back of your coach now, in the center at the um, top is your rear view camera. Above that, you've got your three red marker lights, and at the end of the, each of the cap, your marker lights. Uh, these are your brake lights, turn signals, reverse lights, and uh, brake light, third brake light. At the bottom, you've got your, your hitch plug here, towing, and ladder. So this ladder has a maximum capacity uh, that's listed here as 250 pounds. So remember that if you're uh, going up and down the ladder, not to exceed that weight. As we come around here to our next compartment door on the driver's side of our cord compartment here. Our cord 
is a manual. Uh, so once we extend it as, as far as we need, we lock it in place so that we can close the door. The cord goes into this black box. This is our transfer switch. So it transfers power either from our generator or our shore cord. It chooses which power goes in our coach. So the transfer switch will always choose the generator over the shore cord. So if you're running your generator, you're gonna get power from your um, gray cord coming in and that's gonna power up your coach. If your generator shuts off, then it will choose or select the shore cord. There's an additional light here. You can turn on and off. We have our gasoline fill here. Our next compartment forward is our storage compartment with light, marker light, and our next compartment is our water bay compartment. Once we connect our water supply here, that's less than 60 PSI pressure, we will have fresh water going into the coach. Once it goes into the coach, you can choose whether you want it to just go into the faucets and um, all the water lines this way, or do you want to fill your fresh tank? So if you want to fill your fresh tank, the water that's going in here will go into the tank continuously until it's full. Then you will have to turn that off or it will overflow out the bottom of the coach. Uh, that's not, a big issue it's just that you don't want to continuously fill your tank and have it overfill because it'll uh, have a big pool of water under your coach in the off position it's just going to feed water into your water lines in your coach uh, like you would for city city water um, you have a black tank rinse and we'll show you in a minute how to empty your black tank so let's move over to the next compartment You see here we have our, our four inch pipe connection. Um, this, is neat. this needs to be removed to empty the black tank. You remove the one in the floor, connect your sewer hose here. Once you connect your sewer hose here, it goes out, uh, goes to the sewer drain. And then we have a pull handle here um, we have two pull handles for our gray and our black tank. Uh, we would uh, pull the sewage one first, which is the one on the left. Just pull it towards you. That will drain the sewage. And then the next one over to the right is your gray tank, which is your wastewater. Pull that one. That will rinse uh, the, the black uh, out of the uh, drain hose so that it's cleaner. And then you would push both of them in so they're off, put the cap, remove your hose, put your cap back on here, and then put your floor cap back in place. To winterize the coach, this is the winterizing pickup tube. We would insert, we would take this off and insert it into potable antifreeze, reverse these handles, turn the water pump on, that would pull antifreeze solution into the coach and then you would open up your sink shower and appliances to fill those lines and those appliances with the antifreeze the potable antifreeze once that's complete you'll use up about two or three gallons of fluid uh, you'll shut the water pump off and then recap this uh, and this coach is winterized right now so in the event that your water pump seems maybe a little uh, weak or just not pumping as much water as you'd like, there is an additional uh, screen that can be removed here. If you loosen this, you'll be able to drop the screen out. It's a sediment screen. It picks up particulate that might be coming in uh, or through the tank, wherever in the line. You can clean the screen, put that back, and then uh, that will help uh, so you're increasing your water pressure again. 
So now that you know how to drain your black tank, this is the rinse. So just before you take the uh, drain hose off and close the gate valves, you can attach your water supply here. It sprays the inside of the tank and that would drain out the sewer line. After you're done rinsing, remove the hose, put our cap back on, and then remove our sewer hose and close our gate valve. Our next compartment forward is more storage and our um, slide room control. Our slide out control here is a dual motor. So this, this control is for the main uh, full wall slide room here. Uh, behind here is the pickup pump uh, for the water that you get gray water in the kitchen area that pumps it into the gray tank. So remember that if you're using uh, the appliances or the kitchen sink, that you'll need to have a 120 volt uh, source to the coach, whether you're running your generator or plugged in um, or your inverter on, uh, because this pump will pump the fluid from the kitchen into the gray tank. There's an additional light switch here that you can turn on. In our next compartment forward, we have more storage. And our LP tank is in the front compartment. You'll notice there's no lock here. Um, that's kind of a safety feature, RVIA standard, so that in case someone smells LP, they can always come in here and turn the valve off, which is clockwise. If you're gonna operate any of your LP appliances, you'll wanna have this turned on or opened counterclockwise. There's a gauge here uh, to tell you how full your tank is. This is the fill. You won't need to open or close this or this. So you won't need to use these. Just watch your gauge. And um, if you happen to smell LP, always remember to close this valve clockwise. So this is the water heater that we showed you from the inside uh, where you can winterize it from the backside, do the bypass. But from the outside, it has two small latches that you can put vertical, then you can open the door. Uh, this is a gas water heater, dual solenoid gas valve that feeds a burner here. The air that's being burnt and going through here comes out hot here, so we don't ever want to touch this. There's a pop-off or release valve here. If it gets too hot, water will drip out of here. Uh, this one's been winterized. You can see the plug is not inserted here, so it's not in use. Uh, to, to winterize, you would remove this plug, drain all the water out, put it in bypass mode inside. When you're done with the winterizing, put your cap there and just close your door. So when you uh, come to your destination and you're parked in a campground, you wanna open your slides, Numar recommends that you check this gap here between the slide and the wall. This trim and the Z trim uh, need to be about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. If you see uh, anywhere around the slide that it's maybe just touching or about to touch, go and move your coach to a more level position so that that gap will be there so that when you run your slide room, it's not gonna touch or scratch uh, the paint when you open your room. 